Welcome back to Fortitude. J.W. Wilson here, and uh, I got to tell you a little quick story. Uh, a few weeks ago, I went to see uh, an off-Broadway musical called Spamilton at uh, the Reed Cabaret at Casa Manana with a couple friends of mine, and we watched this incredible performance. We loved it, but we were entranced by this pianist <laughs> that was playing the, the music for the show. And after the show, I went by, to, I had to meet him, and I got to know him a little bit there in the dark, and I asked him if he'd come jump on a show. So sitting before me today, Eugene Gwotes. That's me. Welcome to the show, Eugene. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, a, there's a story here that we're going to unfold, but first off, your music prowess is what drew me in. Like you, unbelievable talent, <laughs> talented pianist, well, thank you. which I loved. I mean, that was the be- one of the best. The show was insane, awesome. <laughs> but the music that went along with it, made that, that brought the whole thing together for me. So we're grateful for your time. Thank you. You call yourself a musical director for the musical star, for musical stars generally. You've worked mm-hmm. with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Who are some people you've worked with in your time? Well, I'll, I've worked for a lot of Broadway legends and, uh, and yes, I have worked with Lin Manuel. Everybody's going to ask. Way right? back when uh, he created In the Heights, which I think is actually even better than Hamilton. Okay. Because it's Latin music and it's great. The mm-hmm. movie was filmed right in the area where I'm living there. And uh, I knew Lin um, when we worked on In the Heights. They called me in to play the rehearsal because the genius behind Lin Manuel Miranda is his music director Alex Lacamoire. Mm-hmm. May I say, but Lin's great, and they work great together. You just exposed and, his secret. Yeah, but Alex uh, asked me to play. They were having a hard time finding, I think, pianists that could play that Latin beat. Right. And I'll never forget um, when uh, Alex called me to play a dance rehearsal. This is for In the Heights, mm-hmm. way before it was even off Broadway, and I. I actually knew In the Heights from when I helped uh, Mandy Gonzalez, who was one of the original Ninas in In the Heights, Mm -hmm. and I taught her her music for the workshop, and I was in love with the music then, and Mandy told me all about it, and then all of a sudden, months later, I get a call from Alex Lackamore that they need a pianist to play the dance rehearsals that they were preparing, so I got to meet Andy Blankenbuehler, who was the Great choreographer, won a Tony for that. And um, then I met Lynn manuel and, uh, and Alex got me to play. And I played the opening number and sight read it, and it's a Latin beat, and everyone went nuts after we finished. And I thought they were going nuts because I thought, wow, what a great opening. If you ever see in the Heights, the opening is amazing. But no, they were... <laughs> <laughs> and Manuel came by and runs, hugs me, and everyone's like hugging me, going, "Oh my God, this is great!" And the percussionist that was there was saying, "You're the eighth pianist that, could, and you finally get it. No mm-hmm. one else had. A, they had a hard time playing it, and we finally found a pianist that could play it. Nice. Yeah. Who else have you pl- have you worked with? Wow. Who? Else? Well, Lou Diamond Phillips is coming to do Miss Saigon at Casa, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. he and I went to UT Arlington together. Uh, I met him in at UT Arlington when I was involved in the music department. He was oh, involved nice. in theater. Nice. He wrote plays and needed music for his plays. Mm-hmm. And so I wrote a thing called the Unicorn Song for his Unicorn Song play. Right. Which is great. Not many not many people realize he's an mm-hmm. amazing, talented writer mm-hmm. and director as well as actor. And so... I'm and guessing we, Cheetah, Cheetah Rivera. Cheetah Rivera. I've well. heard, yeah, I the Broadway legends are amazing. Cheetah Rivera, who I've worked with, and she's the greatest. Mm-hmm. I had her come down here for the. Uh, they have those awards for the community theaters in the Dallas Fort Worth theaters, not just community, and it's the Column Awards, and they have the Cheetah Rivera Award. And my niece Gina uh, was actually nominated and won. And so they asked me to get Cheetah to come down and give my niece the Cheetah Rivera Award. Oh, great. Now they have nationally and internationally, they have the Cheetah Rivera Dancing Awards in New York. Mm -hmm. And I've played for that. And Cheetah's a sweetheart. I call her Sweeta. Mm -hmm. I've also worked for Broadway legends like Donna McKechnie. And I've dealt with Stephen Sondheim, may he rest in peace, and Harold Prince. Billy Billy Porter? Billy Porter, he actually did uh, Five Guys Named Mo here, mm-hmm. and he's great, and he's and he's um, 
always has been an amazing talent. He directed that show. Uh, Betty Lynn Buckley's from Fort Worth. Yep. You should, have you had her yet? No, I She's haven't. She's amazing. She's and, hard to reach. Yeah. <laughs> she has a ranch somewhere near mm-hmm. Weatherford. Betty, I, if you're out there, we'd love to see you. Betty, and well, I helped her actually learn. She won a Tony Award for Cats, mm-hmm. where she sang Memory. And we were working way back. It was actually 1982. We were working on Sound of Music at Casa, and she had to learn this song for Andrew Lloyd Webber, and it happened to be Memory. So she'll go around and say that Eugene helped me learn Memory. Excellent. That's and a good resume builder right there. It's great. And she's great. She's a fierce horse rider, too. That's incredible. She would do those equestrian shows, and I've seen her do that, and I go, oh, my God. She's amazing. That's awesome. Well, you're you're a Fort Worth native, but yes. you're based in New York currently because yes. Broadway obviously lives there, and a lot of your, <laughs> a lot of your people you work with. Yeah. Um, but the story gets a little little more interesting. You, you, I just we just learned this before the show. There's a there's a person called the Viking Man who exists at a school called uh, Nolan High. Nolan High School. Yeah. And this man turns out you're the you're the original I'm Viking the original. Man. I'm the original. What was that thing you used to do with your hands? This was, originally it was called the Viking Man Blessing. Okay. Now, anyway, but what I would do is we would do Viking Man skits. I had to lure people to come to the pep rallies. So I created these. This is at the time when Saturday Night Live was doing those funny skits. And I did some crazy skits because we were not a good team at the time. But, man, I would get people to come, and I treated it like theater and had people come. I got the craziest, fun kids to be in skits, you know, the class clowns mm-hmm. and all that. And I created these Viking Man skits, and the pep rallies, we would end it. And they were so silly, absolutely silly. And I wish I could give you a picture of what I wore. I, uh, and then after every skit, I would give the Viking Man blessing, and mm-hmm. I thought being Catholic... I thought it would be funny that I know how the TCU has this mm-hmm. and longhorns of that. Yeah. I thought at the time how funny it would be to have to use two hands to make a hand signal mm-hmm. and that I have everyone raise it and I give this Viking man blessing like so that we win and that we play great and everyone's safe and and I So the, the Viking man So I stuck. created this blessing and this is based on the benediction at church where the priests would have the monstrance right, and right. go like that. So I thought I'd do a V sign and have everyone raise up their hands like that. Nice. And it's now everyone does it. It's like a signal. Well, very cool, very cool. And I, yeah. we just found out, uh, we, we've had a guest on the show. We actually did an on-location uh, podcast with a man named Emmett Smith, longtime <laughs> organist in Fort Worth. He's great. Turns out he's your, he's he your teacher. He's my organ teacher. That's pretty cool. I was so glad to hear that you mentioned it. He's done thousands, not hundreds, thousands of weddings and <laughs> I, I assume funerals. He said as much, uh, but this man's been around and obviously his organ skills are. I would love to part, see him. Yeah, he's a wonderful oh man. Oh my God, I have to watch that. Uh, uh, and then you mentioned your parents. Could we talk for a second yes, about your yes. folks? What did you tell me about your mother? Well, my mother, uh, Eugenia, and she was actually in concentration camp and escaped from Auschwitz. But, you know, her husband, my father, it's Dr. Felix Quotes, who was the first Tarrant County medical examiner okay. of Tarrant County, and they have a street named after him. That's just called unbelievable. Called Felix Quotes Place, which I would love to get a speeding ticket on that street just so the cop could go and say, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. How did you How did you become, how did you get into music with a, a father, so a prominent figure in Fort Worth? My father is an amazing, he would do autopsies and work on cases, but in lunch and at nights, he would play piano for the Rotary Club, the Sertoma Clubs, right. the Women's Club. He was very funny. They called mm-hmm. him the Victor Borga of Fort Worth. <laughs> Victor Borga at the time was a famous funny pianist and comedian and my father was just as funny and just as talented as he was do you have a favorite story about your dad or is that your dad's career that you could share a quick one well they did they used to have a show called um uh it was on channel eight anyway they did a little 15 minute special on him he was very funny um we would do 
two pianos with he and my elder brother and then my other brother and I. We had pianos we played and entertain people. He was also choir director at St. Andrews and he played the organ and he would always pound his foot on the podium and it would mm-hmm. sound like a bass drum. It was really funny. And he was very funny. And to switch gears, your mother, that the story about Auschwitz, yeah. would you please share it? Do you, what can you tell us about that well, the escape? Because that obviously grabs your attention instantly. Yeah. She, They were in the ghetto, apparently. There's so much to say about this. She was with my father's sister and his mother. They stood together. Mm-hmm. And it's a long to make a long story short they were able, when they were marching to another camp um they um they acted like they were going to use the bathroom one of the german soldiers that was marching with them happened to be really close to my um uh, aunt my mother's sister-in-law mm-hmm. and somehow they planned on acting like they were going to go out to do the bathroom you know, while they're walking, but they didn't come back. They ran, ran. They were shot at. Oh, wow. And apparently, um, my mother, who died in 2001, my father died in 1979. Um, she had a bullet that grazed her ankle that was actually stuck in her ankle. And I remember her saying that she pulled it out. But they said that when they did her autopsy, that the um, bullet, there was still a bullet in her ankle. Oh, wow. And she escaped, and somehow they were saved by a Russian soldier in a farm. And Mm -hmm. then they reunited. Even the way she found my father after that, because they were separated, is amazing. And uh, there has to be a movie. I know that there are people interested in making a movie out of it, but uh, we have to find a really good writer. That's what the problem is. Incredible. Well, you're currently, and you shared this with me, you're currently on a heart transplant list to boot. <laughs> right. I mean, you're about to play the piano for us. We're going to sh- highlight some of the things that I got to see. But <laughs> as we sit today here, you're currently on the heart transplant list, yes? Yeah, what happened was uh, I was tired, out of breath and all that. And to make a long story short, it turned out that my I have a whole history in my family. With, mm-hmm. we, it's genetic. Yes, sir. My father died of heart attack. My uh uh, mother died of heart attack. My two brothers have had heart attacks, but have survived. They're doing great. And uh, I didn't even know that I had several heart attacks, apparently. Mm-hmm. So the doctor said there's uh, millions of people that don't realize they have silent heart attack. But apparently I had so many that they said that my heart was so bad that um, I can't even do bypass surgery. So I'm on a list. And I have a Milrenone medicine. That's this little bag here I have. And it's IV'd into me. Otherwise, mm-hmm. I would have to stay in the hospital waiting for a heart. Wow. And I said, no, I got things to do. I'm working on a new Dolly Parton musical that we did here at mm-hmm. Casa in November. And we're playing it in May next month in Tennessee. So we're hoping that she sees it. She's given our blessing and all that. And, and uh, I told the doctors, I have to at least do that show before Mm -hmm. i get my heart so i like to tell people after may i'm going to go to the land of oz and get a heart and at the same time my wife would love for me to get a brain too while i'm at it (laughs) but um yeah i think you know well you're about to play the piano for us and we're grateful for that because that's (laughs) obviously that's a it's it's an allure for you um (laughs) your name is is wildly spelled uh quotes I'm sure people over your whole life have just butchered the hell out of it, but yeah, what a it, cool last name. And now that I know your background, I'm, it's impressive. Well, um, we, it's actually pronounced Gvoosh, but my family Americanized it to quotes, which rhymes with notes, so I'll right, give sure, notes. Sure. And then my father liked, used to say that it's the seventh line on the night chart, if you see the way it's spelled, G-W-O-Z-D-Z. I got to tell you, like, Life's pretty pretty interesting sometimes. <laughs> You're sitting in the Reed Cabaret listening to Spamilton, and <laughs> you take interest in a guy playing the piano, and now here you sit with all these incredible uh, backstories. Uh, thank you for joining us, by the way. Oh, anytime. Um, before we go off from this portion of the interview, we always ask our guests, family aside, no no wife, kids, any of that stuff, do you, is there a, be- a best day of your entire life you could share with us? It's an intentionally difficult question, but oh. we like to see what people come up with. You know what was fun was when I was 
inducted into the Nolan High School Hall of Fame, mm-hmm. and I got to do a, reenact a skit. Actually, recreated a skit for it, where I had Viking Man come back from 1979 into it was 2019. So he comes back 40 years later. Oh wow! And it, he notices how things have changed and for and for the better. And I loved it. the skit was great. And the high school kids were mm-hmm. amazing, and everyone having them chant Viking Man was sort of cool and. And then I told them I'm going to go back to 1979 at the end of the skit and tell people how Nolan's going to be in great shape mm-hmm. 40 years from now. Mm-hmm. Which, is, but that was sort of cool. But yeah, other, I mean, other than the family stuff, um, oh, the stars winning the Stanley Cup in 1999. I've, I've kind of gathered you're a stars <laughs> fan. I don't know where I got that bit, but yes, is it my song? Yes, your song. You're a real fan. Big fan, and for this sure. could be a good year for us. Well, those New Yorkers, I'm sure they love seeing that, don't they? And we have a good time. The, I like the New York Ranger fans. They're yeah. very witty and very great. And I've gone to games there, and they're a lot yeah. better than the New York. The New Jersey Devil fans are really nasty and bad. And But the <laughs> New York Rangers and the New York Islander fans are really nice. Nice. Really well, good. Eugene Gwotes, let's go play some piano. <laughs> okay. Thank you for being here. Anytime. Hi, I'm Eugene Gwotes. And I will now be doing the opening number from Spamilton, which is a spoof on Hamilton. And this is actually the opening number called Lemon Well as Hamilton. But I'm going to jump through. That's the original music there. And uh, so you might recognize it. So. Ha, ha, ha. 